raise a couple of kind of criticisms of the the line of uh, argument or, or uh, reasoning that that we've been exploring today. Um, one is that uh, something about reporting self-censorship, as HXA does in our annual uh, series of, of research reports, um, is is a little odd. It, 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 it's a little bit over-reliant on those same perceptions. Uh, and sometimes those of us who talk about self-censorship are also uh, skeptical when other people are talking about, let's say, emotional harm. Should we be better off talking less, drawing less attention to perceptions and, and self-censorship? Uh, we had a question in the chat about whether that could actually backfire and send a message that it's actually uh, normal to be scared about talking in class when it'd be more effective to do the opposite. Uh, in other words, and I am sorry, I don't know which which of you might like to weigh in on this first, but should we be talking more about courage in this conversation? Yeah, I'll, I'll weigh in since I think that very first, just because that question connects to the social norms issue I raised, um, which I, I do think that there's lots of research that suggests that if you communicate the norm that people value dissent or free expression or whatever, um, that more people are going to engage in it. There is a risk of constantly saying there's no speech on campus or people are are will be destroyed if they get, say something out of the blue, because even people who haven't yet encountered that experience will button up because they're worried that it might happen to them. Um, and so it becomes what's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and, and there's lots of research on campuses about false norms. So a, a famous research on this was around campus drinking. There's a, there's a binge drinking culture on, in dorms on campuses, has been for a long time. Well, it turns out if you survey the students, most of them don't actually like that culture, but they feel like they have to do it because everybody's doing it. But once you reveal that most people actually don't want to do that, then all of a sudden the, the people who felt pressured no longer feel pressured and they're less likely to binge drink and their performance improves and their drinking goes down and their dropout rates go down. And so, um, of course, it's figuring out like this goes to Kevin's point about how to frame it. What do students support? And then how could you uh, get, measure that and then surface it in ways that reinforce a healthy norm? Because it turns out that that is like one of the easiest things you can do to unlock healthy behaviors, just find out if people already support it, but they're not sure because they've been led to misled to believe something else. Um, so I think like that is one of the first things you can do. And then obviously, I think the second thing you need to do, and this is the most pop, one of the most popular questions, uh, was that you need institutional support. You need leaders in the institution, deans, uh, the tenured professors, they're going to want to have to be the people who step up and back up the norm and enforce it. Um, so that there isn't backsliding. And then it's going to be easier for the grad student teachers or the adjunct professors to speak up. It's hard to expect them to stick their neck out if they think the norm is not to challenge any orthodoxy. Um, and then I'll say one last question and I'll, I'll shut up, is that I do think well, Kevin's point I think is really important. How do you frame it as a public good that everybody on campus benefits from? And, and I just was in this conversation yesterday on Twitter with with uh, there's there's threats to tenure, there's massive threats from from governments uh, to state institutions. This is a red state problem, not a blue state uh, problem as much. Um, threatening to take away tenure, and of course academics scream and shout. It's horrifying to academics, and they say this is a threat to academic freedom and blah 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 blah. Well, I don't think that resonates with anybody. I don't think the average citizen voter in those states gives a shit about academic freedom. Most people don't even know what that means. But what they care about is having good post-secondary education for their kids to go to college, right? They care about these institutions because most citizens have some aspiration that they hope their kids will go to a good college. They want their kids to go to one that has a good reputation where they'll be challenged, where they'll learn things, where they'll be pushed. Um, they wanna get their money's worth, <laughs> I go to the consumer point. Um, but I, so I think you want to use language about the value of tenure in terms of like producing, you know, high quality education. Uh, you don't you don't want to frame it through the lens of obscure abstract terms that only resonate amongst, you know, 1% of the population who's academics. So I think like we have to think about this from all threats to to speech and academic freedom. How do we frame it in a way that citizens and the surrounding communities, voters and people who live in these academic environments and all levels of the academic hierarchy from, from deans and provosts and presidents all the, all the way down to grad students who are teaching these classes um, can, can uh, feel supported 
and understand that they're part of the mission of the university and that this is part of it. Thank you. Um, if if there's no more discussion on that, maybe we will turn now to to some uh, questions from the Q and A. So uh, I'd like to go to the Q and A, but I I've written this down. This is a a very popular phrase among faculty, um, and that's just not at my institution. So these these two words have been resounding over the past two years. I'm afraid. And then they fill in with what they're afraid of. I'm afraid to say this in class, or I'm afraid to share this with the students, or I'm afraid. And then I have a, a recently uh, retiring chair who is going to be retiring. And he said, one of the reasons why <laughs> is because of the classroom environment and that uh, people have just expressed fear out of um, what they're going to, you know, how students are going to respond to what they present. And I'm, I'm bringing this up as we're going into Q&A, but uh, it's in response to what you were saying about the in, environments in which, which faculty members are, are teaching in. And it's, it's a recurrent conversation. Um, and I'm leading in this, this direction. So uh, faculty don't even want to engage within the classroom in these in this type of debates. And it's related to what you said, Michael, related to about courage. So if faculty are afraid, uh, students clearly uh, may express that, that fear. And so courage is, is indeed important to, to engage this, but there's the consequences. So I'm thinking about this. So here's from the administrator uh, perspective. So the reason why I hear all of that is because no one wants to be excoriated uh, on social media. No one wants to get sent to the dean. I get the complaints from, uh, from students. Uh, they get to the chair and the chair forwards it to me. And so people don't know what to say. And so even while they are, they're teaching the content that they've taught for 15 years, Someone, and I is going to say this, there are, there are some clear generational dynamics of, and what students bring to the classroom now is not what, uh, and Megan, you were, you were saying this, I remember what was said to me, basically keep my head down as well. Uh, actually, the, the quote from uh, Jim Pareko, who was my then chair, said, uh, keep your head down, kid, and uh, don't insult the dinosaurs and you'll get tenure. Mm. <laughs> That's an exact quote. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm bringing this up to say, uh, that's not the generation now of keeping your head down and not insulting the dinosaurs of sorts. And so they're speaking out they're, They've been taught this, they've been taught to, to speak out and to talk and to chat. Uh, um, and authority doesn't really mean too much anymore.